about CarPro Reflect. This is probably, well, this is my favorite finishing polish. There's some paints where I might choose a different one, but in the majority of them, uh, this would be my go-to, especially on this paint. Uh, I, I've always loved Reflect on, on, on this paint, and uh, on anything medium to hard or hard, it's a fantastic polish that's gonna give you the same kind of gloss that you're gonna get from any other finishing polish, or better, in less time and with less product. Uh, it has a few little idiosyncrasies, um, you're going to use less product than you would with most finishing polishes and you're going to treat it just a little bit differently. But um, uh, the other products that we're going to be using with Reflect today are uh, our favorite uh, polish removal towel. That's the Microfiber Madness Yellow Fellow towel. And then uh, there are two pads that I really like with Reflect. Actually, there's a number of them, but these are probably my two favorites depending on what I'm trying to do. There's the CarPro uh, gloss pad. We're going to go with a five inch pad today. And then there's also the Shoal Concepts Honey Spider Pad. Um, on this paint, the Shoal Concept Honey Spider Pad is going to be the best pad that I can use for what I'm trying to do. I am trying to, to remove a very slight bit of uh, damage, and so the gloss pad's not really going to do that the way that this is, and this is still going to finish down just as good as that will on this paint, if not better. So uh, the cool thing about the Honey Spider Pad, you can see these slits in it. Um, that does a couple things. That keeps the clear coat that you're cutting off of the uh, surface. Um, it keeps uh, that from building up on the surface of the pad and getting rubbed around and, and uh, adding any micro marring because it'll get stuck into that, those crevasses. And then in between sections, you're gonna brush out your pad. And so that'll get it out of there. So for anybody that's not familiar with using a dual action polisher or any polisher for that matter, it's uh, obviously very important to Put the pad on centered um, depending on the backing plate you're using and the pad you're using uh, sometimes that is really easy because you can just line it up right along the uh, edge and go for it but in this case the pad's a little bit larger than the backing plate and it is important to center that so what i do and it's a small learning curve it's pretty obvious though uh, just a little bit of logic will help you what i do is i look at it like that and then i kind of eyeball it and i say okay that looks a little bit too much I'll back it off. Instead of putting it all the way on and having to pull it all the way off, I just kind of get an eye for it like that. And then once I feel good about it, then I'll go ahead and push it all the way down and then press it so that it's nice and firm. Obviously, it's um, clear that you wouldn't want to have any grit or sand in this pad. You want to store them in a good place, keep them clean. And uh, finally, before you use it, if it's brand new, um, you're going to either prime it with, some people will use a spray of water, although that's going to change the viscosity and stuff of the polish you're using, or they might prime it by uh, simply using more polish than what they would normally use for the first pass. Always important to shake up the product really well before you uh, first use it uh, for the day. and. With Reflect, one of the uh, tricks that I wanted to tell you about is that you're going to use a lot less product than most polishes. Um, even with most traditional polishes, people, uh, beginners, um, will tend to use way more product than they need, which is actually going to end up cutting less or causing an um, uneven distribution of the polish and end up leaving micro marring or swirls and stuff like that that, that you obviously don't want in the paint. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you what I do just to kind of prime the pad. This is way more product than, than you're going to use moving forward. But again, the pad's completely dry, so I'm using a lot. And then when we come back, these are just very thin lines, but it's a good amount of product. When we come back for each additional section, now that the pad will, will have been primed, we're just going to put a couple pea-sized drops on there total, uh, if that. Um, so what I'll do to prime the pad a little bit more before I turn it on is I'll just touch it against the paint a few places. Uh, everybody has a different kind of preference about how they do this sort of thing, but that's what I like to do. Um, what I, I'm using a, a 21 uh, Rupus Bigfoot with a five inch backing plate. Uh, another tip, it's not anything I thought of, but something that I learned from many, many people before me, and you'll see it in other videos if you've looked around, it, the idea is to put a Sharpie mark on your backing plate 
and that is so that on a, on a dual action polisher that does not have a gear driven assembly, um, that is so that you can make sure the pad's always spinning. The thing about this particular type of machine is it's moving on an elliptical orbit. It's not a rotary, it's not spinning on a fixed point. So there's also not a gear, uh, it's not gear driven, so it's not forcing this to keep moving. If you put enough load on this machine, if you put enough weight on it, then this is going to stop spinning. This will not, you'll continue to get this elliptical action, but it won't be spinning like this at the same time, which is important if you want the most cut in performance. So by putting those Sharpie marks on there, you're gonna be able to see that it is in fact still spinning as well. If it's not still spinning, then that probably means that you are pressing too hard like that, or pressing too hard like that, or like this, or you, haven't, you have it on you know, uh, too low or something. Uh, basically, one of the most important things is just to keep the machine completely flat. So uh, we'll go ahead and do it. What I'm gonna start is on a very low speed as I'm priming the pad and spreading that out. So I'll start on like two or three and we'll spread it out and then we'll work up to probably about five. And once this polish goes clear, then we'll back it back down to uh, maybe three, four, something like that. And then once, it's, once the polish is all broken down, we'll wipe it off. If you're able to see it, you would notice that that polish really broke down to where it's completely gone. With most polishes, you'd see more of a translucent um, film left over, but Reflect really breaks down all the way. There's a slight bit of fine powder, what people refer to as dusting. Um, a lot of that uh, will be affected by humidity and stuff like that, um, or drier climates, or you know the, the level of humidity that you have. Um, typically speaking, with Reflect, if you're getting dusting, you're using too much. Um, this is just a very minor amount of dusting. It doesn't concern me, but um, in most cases, it should not be dusting. If, if it is, then you're, you're, uh, you're using too much product. So next step, always important, is to clean your pad. Um, obviously, we're gonna wipe the polish off too, but generally, you use a, we have a brush like this that we use for polish cleansing. There's all kinds of different brushes you can use, but you want a stiff bristle. You're not pressing down on that brush. You wanna just give it a nice light brush all the way in and all the way out. If you press too hard, obviously you're gonna tear up your pad. So that's just to break loose any clear coat and polish residue that's been trapped in those uh, crevasses there. Even if we were using a flat pad that did not have crevasses, we would still do the same method, and that's to pull it out of the pores. Either way, you gotta pull, pull the polish out of the pores before you put some new fresh polish on there and start from scratch. Another step, you don't wanna leave that polish on there. You wanna come back and take your yellow fellow towel and just wipe it off. Should come off real nice and easy. Um, and it's not that you'll, you'll see much there, but just pretend there's something <laughs> there because there is, as, as a small amount as it is. You just wipe that off and um, you're good to go. So after that, you uh, will come back. Now that the pad's primed, we're really gonna use a small amount. That's about two and a half drops. I wouldn't even call them pea size. And generally you're gonna work in a section of about two to two and a half square feet. Um, obviously, depending on the contours of the vehicle, you might change to one by three or something like that. So here we can see that this goes in right here all the way down. And so I'm not gonna break this into sections going across areas that I don't even wanna polish like that. Instead, I'm gonna, this curve comes back out here. So I'm, I'm just gonna, and you know, again, everybody has their preferences, but I'll just work on just this section like this now. is pretty much all there is to it with CarPro Reflect. Obviously, if you aren't familiar with using a machine, then you obviously wanna be careful around rear view mirrors. You really wanna be careful around everything. Um, not only is this spinning, but it's also, again, as we talked about, it's going on an elliptical orbit. So it's gonna come out and come back in. So even if you're standing still, that's still moving. 
So when you get up to a rear view mirror, just be cognizant of that fact. Um, use common sense pretty much and don't hold it in one spot for a long time. You know, you don't just hold it in one spot or you're gonna overheat that paint and you don't wanna get the, the paint super hot. That's not the, the correct way to polish and keep it uh, nice and cool. And um, uh, other than that, um, if you have any other questions, just uh, definitely reach out. Um, you're welcome to email us. You'll see all the details below and uh, any questions you have, you can post right there. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks a lot, have a great day.